Hello everybody, welcome to part 12 of our e-commerce website building lesson series. This one we're continuing our cart display. So here in part 11, when I uploaded the video, Maniac of Web brings up a good point. Will the price be changing when the quantity is increased? Like example, if the quantity is 1, the price is 4.99, but when the quantity is increased to 2, it will show the price as 9.98. And you can do that very simply. Let's open up that cart.php that section of code where it's rendering the cart output right below the while loop you can simply let's take this price variable price equal to this price whatever the price is for that item times you put the star symbol the asterisk times each item quantity so that's very simple to do there and that'll make you a little math equation that'll say if the price is 499 the quantity happens to be Two, it'll make it 998. The price will be 998 for that card item. Let's press Control S to save it and FTP it up and see what happens. I'm going to put the black hat in my cart. I'm going to go back to home, put the black jeans in. So then I'm going to add the black hat again. It should be quantity two, item price 998. So let's go ahead and add it again. And there you go. Item quantity 2, item price 998. And actually, you should have been able to figure that out on your own because of all the in depth explaining we've been doing about what variables you have at your disposal to work with. So you have the quantity variable right there. And in PHP, you can do subtraction, addition, multiplication. The asterisk symbol, the star symbol here, is simply multiplication. So you take the price for that item out of the database times it by the quantity and you'll have your your total price for that one item no matter how much the quantity is for that item in the cart okay now I'm gonna go into design view and I'm going to just put in a cart static representation of the cart the way I want it to be designed okay so here is the cart output variable so right under that I have a break tag under that so the line under that I'm gonna put in a table insert table I want it to be let's just say two rows and I don't know six columns I don't know if that'll be enough but we'll try it out we'll try it like that and so I'm gonna put various titles for each products details here and then we'll have a dynamic rendering of each product and its actual details in this dynamic row that will be here but for now I'm just gonna statically design it just like you would statically design anything else directly on the page here and then we'll resume the video because I don't want to sit here just tweaking the design of the cart in uh, design view when anybody could do that really any monkey with Dreamweaver can design their cart in design view here but making it dynamic will be where we pick up okay so you see what I've got here is a table with my six columns two rows I gave it a cell padding of 6, border of 1, and that's it. It's got 100% width set on that table. And I adjusted these cells to be sized just like I need to, just by visually dragging them around. So what we want to do is make this table row, in the code view, that table row right here, dynamic, to where each product in the cart will render out its own little table row make good sense sure does let's go so let's try something here let's highlight that table row and right here where it says TR to the TR put it make put that into a code comment comment it out so it doesn't render and then right here let's put that cart output variable right there semicolon and go up to your PHP tab and echo it out now since you're going to be echoing it into the table you're going to make sure it has to have the same amount of uh, table cells six table cells that you have to render within this section of the cart output in the PHP It's very simple so you see this cart output instead of just throwing these things out for display like that we're going to neatly pack them into table cells six of them to be exact 
and we're going to get the items image to display in the first table cell along with the title of the product. Alright, so let's put a little comment that says dynamic table row assembly. Each thing needs to get placed within the TD tags right there. So let's take this first one. Actually, it's going to be item name would be the first one. So let's take that. Control C. Let's put it right there. Let's take these TD tags. Make sure the closing one's on that side. You can get rid of that and and this and BSP, which is just a space. So this is how you want it to look. You want to have your opening TD tag here, and then the variables, whatever you want to be inside of that TD tag, in between them, and then close it up with the closing TD tag. So the product name will be there, and we'll also put the product image. But first, let's make sure this all works and renders out to the table. Let's change all of these up. So this one we don't need. And we know the next one we want description. So let's make sure in this while loop that we get the details. Let's make sure this says details and details. So we're accessing the details from the MySQL query for that item. We can put that right here. Details. That's going to be the second table cell in that row. Now let's make sure we have six all together. Four, five, six. So the next one, so we had details and these you can actually just get rid of all these when we're done. These four lines. The price is going to be where was that? Unit price is in the third one. So we're going to have to change this price to price total. because we're going to have to have the unit price in the third cell right here. This is going to be price. And that's going to be the unit price will be 499 for all my products. And then you want to have the total price which was after quantity. So we know we can get the quantity variable here. Pop it right into place right there. <coughs> and then we need the total so we can take price total variable and put it here and the last thing is going to be a remove button so let's just type that in for now let's just type in an, an X character just for static representation let's remove all of these we don't need these anymore We're going to have to put the table row tag in there too. So let's make cart, pot, cart output variable again. And this is going to be starting tr tag. That's the starting table row tag. So right there at the top, you put the starting table row tag. At the very bottom, you put the closing table row tag. So there you go. There's a dynamic table row that's going to be assembled within this for each loop for each cart item and it's going to be placed right there in cart output. Let's see if that works. Let's FTP it to the server and check things out. Well, we still have to add a few things to this table to make it really work as a cart should. Alright, so I FTP the new programming up to the store and this is what I get, which is exactly what I wanted. And You can make these this table header any color you want. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the color of it. Let's go to the, back to design view. And instead of white, you can see I have mine set as all background of white for those table cells. I'm going to change those to maybe some blue color, light blue. There we go. And I'm going to make all that text bold. Control S, FTP it, and there you go. So you have little headings up there that describe what the, all the information is inside. Now let's work on getting this image for Black Hat to show. And we also want to make this a link to the actual store product so they can go and view that product in depth if they're not sure what they had put in their cart. So we'll make that a link to the product and we'll also put the product image there. And so let's go into the code view, the cart output, and right here where they have the product name, 
let's put a break tag right there so the product name will be on top and then pop in this code now what we can do here is encapsulate these with single quotes this whole string that way we can leave all the double quotes in there for all of the HTML attributes of that tag and they'll still render incorrectly but where you want the variables to come in is right here where I have these X's so this has to be you can see I have the width set to 40 and the height set to 52 for all my product images so they'll be nice and small in the cart so item ID I can grab that variable right there and pop that right here by putting a single quote space period space the variable space period space single quote that will allow that variable to render in this location here since our string is encapsulated by single quotes we have to break the string using single quotes then add the variable and then resume the string and here in the alt you just want to have the product name I guess so let's do the same thing single quote period variable period single quote and let's put the variable right there product name so you see how that works? You don't really need the spaces in between your period there, but I like to put the spaces because it really lets me know what I'm doing there. And it gives me a better visual representation of what's going on. And I know it's a little tricky because there's two different ways you can render variables. You can render them in double quotes or single quotes, but you just have to make sure that your quoting, the way you're using your quotes, is correct to let the variables display. Okay, so that should give me the image right under the name. Yeah, let me just show you the other way to do it. I'm going to remove those single quotes and periods that we put in to make the variable display within the string that's encapsulated by single quotes. And we'll have it if we use double quotes here. So watch, I'm going to use double quote and double quote this might be a little easier for some of you guys anywhere in your string where you have double quotes you can see it breaks it so what you have to do is escape all double quotes in the string by putting the backslash so you see there I'm just putting the backslash between all double quotes in that string now I don't have to do anything just put in the variable and it will display in the string there so let's test that out save and the reason why I just I took the extra time to show you both methods there is because I know a lot of people run into trouble when they're trying to quote and escape things within a PHP rendering string okay so you see what I've got there and I have to go into the HTML section and make sure <coughs> right here we're not echoing the cart output up top anymore we just have it down there where it should be for the dynamic table row. Now, if I look at my cart, that's exactly what it should look like. And you can align all of these things, vertically align them to the top if you want. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to make a link, like I said, to the actual product on the site. Now, if you want your link to be around the product title, just go ahead and highlight all this right there. So right there around the product name, we're going to put in, throw in a link, OK. You can see that we have to escape that double quote <coughs> and that double quote mark. And that's it. Now we can put the actual href to the product, product.php, id is equal to, Actually, we can remove these, those double quotes and the periods there, because we don't need them anymore. Since we made the string encapsulated with double quotes. Since our whole string is encapsulated with double quotes here, that means we do not have to do anything to those variables and they'll still render. So what we need here is item ID variable product.php question mark id equals item id 
Let's FTP that up. Your cart. Okay, so now you can see I have links. Let's click that and see if it goes. Perfect. Let's go back to my cart. Let's click this one. Perfect. Go back to my cart. I'm good to go. All right. Now, when we pick up in part 13, we're going to add the last few essential things that the cart needs, like changing the quantity within the cart interface here and the remove link. And once we get those two things working, we, we're pretty much close to finished because all we have to do is assemble all the variables into a nice little package that can be sent off to the payment gateway. And we're also going to have the payment gateways IPN script for PayPal, which will show you how to database all your transactions. And really, that'll be the end of the series. So we're very close to the end now, guys. But now you have more of a of a real cart look going on here. And we want to put dollar signs in front of these prices. So we can just go into the code very simply and place in a dollar sign there and one right there. Save. And there you go. Oop. I put it in the wrong slot. Each item quantity right here. Price total is where I wanted that. There we go. Okay, so there you have it. There's your total, the dollar sign, unit price with the dollar sign there. You can see I have three of those items, three of the black hats in my cart, so that's why it says 1497 here. And the cart total, we'll show you how to get the cart total in the next lesson, where we'll be showing you how to up the quantity or decrease the quantity. Show show you how to let the person change the quantity here and remove the item. We'll also show the cart total and we'll get into discussions about the payment gateways. Alright, so we'll see you in the next part.